Hello guys, welcome to the third and the last part of customizing Git Bash. While in this part, rather than customizing Git Bash, we would be transforming Git Bash into a Git ZSH or Git Zsh if you like. Yes, that's right. We'll be converting our Git Bash into Git Zsh and unleashing all the Zsh goodies in terms of themes and plugins, hundreds of them. So starting with a the boring theory, I have been a Bash user for quite some time, but the day I met Zsh, I dished Bash and never looked back because Zsh has got a hell lot of things to offer than Bash. In my experience, I found Zsh as one of the most powerful, most popular, highly customizable shell out there, which has got a great potential. And one of the features that make Zsh a really great shell is the plugin support. Zsh has got uh, hundreds of plugins available out there, uh, which can make a user really productive and efficient. So do give it a try. Now, in terms of plugin managers for Zsh, people may go for some of the top plugin managers like uh, Antigen, Zgen, Antibody, Zplug, etc. But as per our needs of this video, we'll be going with uh, Oh My Zsh, which best serves our purpose here. So yes, uh, apart from ZSH on top of Git Bash, we will be also installing uh, Oh My Zsh plugin manager for ZSH. And I will also show you how to install a theme using the Oh My Zsh plugin manager. Now, before we proceed, just a word of caution. What we are going to do in this video is not a very standard practice. I haven't found any official documentation around this. So it's more of a hack if you like. So proceed on your own risk. All right, now another boring theory part, uh, but it's important to understand what we're doing here. So please bear with me. So about Git Bash. Uh, Git Bash actually came from uh, MSYS2. So it's essentially a friendly fork of MSYS2. Now, people who are not very familiar with MSYS2, MSYS2 in turn is, uh, you know, again, it came from the SIGWIN or at least some part of it. So essentially it's the MSYS which enables Git Bash to work on Windows. So this in turn means that if MSYS has got its repository and a package management system, and you can actually install packages on MSYS, then if Git Bash is built on MSYS, this should mean that we should be able to install some packages on top of Git Bash as well. And this is the idea which we will be exploiting for installing Zsh on top of Git Bash. So in simple terms, we'll be downloading Zsh package from the MSYS repository and giving this package to Git Bash or installing that package on top of Git Bash. Doing this, basically, you will enable the full Zsh support in Git Bash. All right, so instead of making you suffer with some more theory, uh, I'll just simply, you know, get cracking. So I'm assuming that you might have already gone through the part one and part two of uh, this video. And if you have, then you might end up having a Git Bash installation on your Windows decorated with one of the Minty themes, as you can see on my screen. However, if you haven't followed part one and two of this video, uh, the assumption is that at least you got a you know, default vanilla Git Bash installation on your Windows. So in my case here, I've got a Git for Windows installation as per part one and two of the video. So as the next step, let's head on to the MSYS2 repository and download the Zsh package from the MSYS2. So click on package index, search for the package called Zsh. Here is the Zsh package, uh, click on this. Now click on the Zsh binary package and, and click on this file to download it. Now if you look at the uh, extension of this file, it's a .zst, so it's a compressed file. But the problem is you cannot open this with the WinRAR or WinZip or you know, any other such tool, but rather you would have to use some uh, special tool or software which can uh, unzip this file. So if you type .zst, you would see quite a few options of the tools which support this compression. And one of them is bzip. So this is almost one of the top utilities. So let's uh, download this utility as well. Let's download the 64 bit. Done. Of course, if you want, you can, uh, you can use any other tool you like which can support .zst file. So I'll just simply install it. Standard installation. Next, install. Finish. All right, so we have successfully installed pzip. So it's time to uncompress uh, our file we downloaded. So right click, pzip, extract here. 
done. Now, for some reason, um, it has again extracted it into a tar file because there was a dot tar and dot zst. You see, so I will again uncompress this uh, tar file as well. Done. This is what we are looking for. Let's open the folder. So here we got our uh, binaries for Zish finally unzipped. Now next we'll be putting this Zish package uh, into our git bash folder. And that's where the little trick is. So let's head on to our git installation folder. Which is in C drive, program files, git. Now the problem is that I can't simply copy the contents of this uh, Zish package into my git folder because uh, there are duplicate folders. You see it's got an etc here, this one has got an etc here, it's got user folder here, it's got a user folder here. So that's where we applied a little hack and what we can do is we can actually copy the contents of these folder into the contents of the git folder. So let's copy the etc contents first. Click on the etc for zish, click on the etc for git and let's copy the zish into the etc for git. Done. Let's come out of this. etc done. Let's go to the user folder now. And let's go to the user folder for git. So as you can see, it's got a bin. It's got a bin here. Lib share, lib share. So we'll be doing the same thing. Copy the bin into the bin. Copy the contents of bin folder into the bin for git. Done. Next is lib. So open the lib for git. Copy the whole zsh. Done. Next is share. So let's open the so let's open the share for git. Simply copy this. User share, user share. So this should do the trick. Done. So basically what we have done here is uh, rather than installing or configuring Zish, we have merged the contents of Zish package into the kit, which would do the trick for us. So let's close these. Let me get rid of all these installers. And now and now a relaunch our git bash once again. Let's close this one. Now in order to check if our trick has uh, worked, typed zsh and here you go. Congratulations. You have successfully installed zsh on top of git bash. So now your git bash is also git zsh. All right, so far so good, but hold on. The real magic is yet to happen. Now, when you launch your ZSH for the first time, it will ask you to create at least the .zshrc file, which is basically a Zish uh, profile configuration file. So I will choose option zero to create a very basic uh, ZSHRC file. Choose option zero and we land on the ZSH prompt. So this, this is basically now your git Zish. So if you compare it with the previous prompt, which was this one, the git bash. So this is the git bash prompt. And what we got here is the git zish. All right, so let's carry on. Now, before we proceed to uh, install oh my zish, the plugin manager we mentioned about, let me show you what it has done so far. So if you go to the user profile, you will see a dot zshrc, a new file being created. So this is where your settings reside for uh, zsh. So let's head on to the oh my zish uh, repository on GitHub. And Omizish is basically, as as I mentioned, you know, it's a it's a plugin framework. So in order to install this, it's very simple. Uh, we will just use this curl command. So let's copy this and head back to our. Let's uh, copy the command. Now what this command will do is basically it will create a dot Omizish folder, which will be essentially uh, the Omizish repository. So it will clone the repository into a folder here in your user profile. So let's hit enter. Done. So what it has done is it has replaced your old .zshrc. Uh, it has taken a backup of the old one and it's uh, created a new one. So if you head on to your user folder, you would see uh, this is the old one. It has taken a backup of the old ones and it has created a new 
.zshrc profile file and here you see the omizish uh, repository being cloned that's it so this completes our omizish installation on top of the zsh now with the installation of omizish you get access to quite a good number of themes which are mentioned here on the on the repository for omizish so these are the themes which get available by default quite a long list or you can see the same thing in this folder so all the themes are located in this directory now you can choose any of these themes and you need to specify what theme you want to use into your .zshrc so let me show you that so this is our uh, zish profile file and as you can see the default uh, theme is uh, Robbie Rushal. So you can replace it, uh, you can replace the value of the theme with any of the themes you want. So that's that. Now though we got a long list of uh, you know default themes which comes along with the oh my zish but in in some sense these are still uh, you know basic themes. So in this video I will take you uh, through the installation of one of a really powerful theme which is called power level 10. It's a quite advanced theme. So let's make our git zish even more fancier with power level 10k. So if you scroll down, see the installation procedure here. So just copy this command. What, what this command will do is basically it will clone the power level 10k repository uh, into the themes uh, in, inside the oh my zish custom themes. Let's copy this. Head back on here. Paste and just press enter. And it's done. So as you can see, it has cloned uh, the power level 10k repository into inside the omizish folder in the user profile in the user directory. Sorry. Now all we need to do is uh, we need to tell our zish profile to launch the power level 10 theme. So we will modify our dot zshrc. And we'll specify the power level 10 theme here. Right, power level 10. Sorry, there's a K as well. And save. Now let's relaunch our terminal. Let's exit this first. Now we are back onto the bash prompt. So launch the ZSH again. And as soon as you uh, change the theme to power level 10K, a configuration wizard for power level 10K theme will run and it will ask you, uh, you know, various questions in order to create a profile for you. So let's answer these questions one by one. Does this look like a diamond? Yes. Block? Yes. Debian? Yes. No overlap? Yes. Unicode? Yes. Disconnect software. Yes. Solid. to left. Let's go for white. Complex pass. No. Yes. And here you go. The Powerline 10K theme again, uh, you know, backs up our .zshrc and creates a new one. So once you go through all the options uh, for the P10K theme, which we just did, it will, you know, start with a kind of default look and feel which you can further customize by going to the .p10k.zsh or even before that, let me show you uh, the reason why, uh, you know, the glyphs you can't see properly. The reason is that we have not chosen the correct font. So I would recommend watch out my other videos, especially the one where I recommended few fonts for Notepad++. The recommended dev font for Powerline 10K is Meslo. So watch the video for Notepad++ and look out for the installation of Meslo font. Once you install the Meslo font, you can choose the font here or by editing your .mintyrc if you're already running Minty themes. So in that case, you need to modify your Mintyrc and you would see the Meslo LGSNF as the font. So let me correct the fonts and uh, relaunch this again. And once I do that, you would see, uh, you know, a much better prompt uh, with all the nice glyphs. So let me exit this first and relaunch. Go to ZSH. 
So as you can see, as soon as we do the ZSH, the prompt changes because now we are into the Z shell. So let's navigate to some repository to see the actual prompt. Here is your new prompt. So I've made some tweaks in the .p10.zsh behind the scenes, which is this profile file. There are literally hundreds of options uh, in the power line theme, which you can modify. So let's go back to our home directory and let me show you. So uh, this is the configuration file for power line 10K theme. And you can see there are hundreds of options literally to customize your Z shell prompt. So I've tried a few things here, which gives me the prompt, which you just saw. Let's try a few commands. So this is your new uh, git bash, or rather I should say git zish. As you can see, the look and feel is totally different from the default git bash. Plus you get the power of uh, ZSH as a shell as well as some powerful plugin manager like uh, Oh My Zish with hundreds of theme options, totally configurable, customizable. And before we sign off, let me give you two plugins as a bonus. So let's go back to our working directory first. And the first one is uh, ZSH syntax highlighting. So it will basically uh, color your prompt even more. So let's install this. Oh My Zish. Simply copy this command and paste, run it. Done, that was quick. The next one is Zish auto suggestions. So this gives you fish like suggestions. Let's go to install MD. Oh my Zish, again, copy this command and paste and run. Once you've done this, you need to update your .zshrc to include these two plugins. So let's do this. Find the plugins. And here, you need to mention all your plugins or whichever plugin you want to use. So let's do zsh auto suggestions and space. The other one is zsh syntax highlighting and the git is already there so let's save our file now we need to we can come back out of the third sh so that we go back in and it gets sourced so now you can see uh, we type some command and you can see the auto syntax highlighting and auto suggestions so if i do cd so as you can see it's giving me the automatic option of uh, the home directory So let's go to, let's go to, so you can see the auto completions and syntax highlighting quite better than the bash. So that's all guys. So here's your new git zish and this is your git bash. So actually uh, you can use them side by side as well. I am, I'm not covering how to by default enter into ZSH for a reason because I don't I, I want to keep both bash as well as in the research so otherwise if you research a little bit you can actually tweak your bash uh, to actually you know enter directly into the ZSH shell every time you launch by default so I, I don't like setting the default shell because I still want to use bash so I'm not doing it but if you want you can do that you can set your default shell to ZSH and apart from this, uh, as I told you, there are using the ZSH and the Oh My Zish plugin gives you access to, if you go to the Oh My Zish uh, wiki and click plugins, this is a list of plugins that are available to your Oh My Zish. As you can see, it's a long list and very nice plugins. So that's all, I guess. Hope you liked your Git bash transformation into Git Zish. Have a good time with the ZSH. That's all for today. Thank you guys. Enjoy. Bye-bye.